Good morning, everyone. It's good to have you here this morning. Uh, praise God. Let's open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll begin our study in the great book of Galatians. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this, this, uh, this morning, Lord God, as we gather together in the house of the Lord to, to declare the word of the Lord. And that, Father God, I just ask you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to um, help me to teach this uh, important subject concerning Galatianism, Lord God, and that, that we can't mix law and grace together, Lord. And I ask you to help me to proclaim this, Lord. Bring, uh, help me to do it with clarity of thought and speech, Lord. And I ask you for the anointing to anoint those who are here today to open their ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us, as well as those who are watching us online. That what we say today, what we share today, will impart wisdom to them, Lord, that they can act on it, Lord. And that they trust in the saving uh, knowledge of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his precious name I do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh, if you will turn with me to your book of Galatians, the book of uh, chapter uh, 5 here. Um, and now we're going to pick up with the last portion of verse 3 here. Uh, we are, I didn't quite finish that last Sunday, but I wanted to hit on, hit on this before we get on the, the next verse. But it says here uh, that, uh, for I testify again to every man who is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Well, I want to talk about that one last part there, that he's a debtor to do the whole law. Well, that tells you right there, you, none of us can do that. We couldn't fulfill the law. That's why Jesus came. So it's a, you're, in, you're in, an impossible, in an impossible situation there. And, so because, and the law contained no salvation whatsoever anyway. So there's no justification in law. And so therefore, it's, uh, <clears throat> people can't even make, keep the laws that they make for themselves. And the one thing that came to my mind as I was looking at this is the New Year's resolutions people make every year. They can't even keep that before the end of the month is over. They are they already broken it. <laughs> so I don't make resolutions. I just I never I don't believe in it. So I just don't do it. Now if it's that's what you want to do and you keep up with it, and fine. But but you see that's what we try to do. Religious man likes to do that. Make make laws for themselves and try to keep because it gratifies the flesh. Amen. I did it, but he can't do it, but I could do it, you know. So that puts us on that self-righteousness, and we don't want that. Amen? So we're, the believer is free from the law in three aspects. He is free from the law in, in three aspects. And number one, he is free from the condemnation that it imposes on the believer. We're free from that condemnation. If any man it says here in, um, uh, oh, my goodness, Romans 8, 1 and 2. There is therefore now no condemnation who, who are, uh, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Those, are, those two laws are the most powerful laws in the universe right there. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus and the law of sin and death. When you, were, when you and I were sinners, and every sinner before he comes to Christ is under that law of sin and death. We're justly doomed to death. But Christ came to redeem us from the curse of the law. He, we're now under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which talks about everything that he did in, at the Calvary's cross. It's, it points to Calvary. It all, it all is the, everything, er, when you see that word in Christ Jesus, it talk, it, it's all about what he did, who he was, and what he did on, on, at the cross. Amen? But, and, but, and so we're set free from that law of sin and death, but we're not under a new law, and we're under the law of spirit of life. And we're committed to that law. We're committed to walk in that law by faith. Amen? And so we're free from the condemnation. We're still responsible for the moral portion of the law. Did you, did you know that? Did you know the, the Mosaic law has a lot, a lot had, uh, had, we're, all, we're responsible for the moral portion because we don't go out, we're not supposed to kill anybody. We don't commit adultery. We don't uh, covet. So we're still responsible for the moral portion of the law. In fact, the whole world is. And they don't, real, they don't realize it, but they are. 
And they're going to answer to that. Amen. So uh, the question may be asked, well, is the believer answerable to the moral law? Absolutely, yes, we are answerable to it. Amen. Amen. The law of God is written in our hearts, isn't it? It's written in there. The Holy Spirit's inside of us teach us, teaching us how to walk in this and how, and how to live a moral life. See, the grace of God it didn't, give, it didn't appear to us to live immoral lives, but we're to live morally. Amen. Praise God. He says here, um, uh, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's what Paul says in Galatians 6. No, God forbid. How should we continue in sin? You know, we've been set free from that. And so we're, not, we're answerable to it, but, but we're, we're free to live holy before God. Amen. And free to worship Him. And so the moment uh, you accept Christ and what He's done for you, He's the only one that perfectly kept the law. He kept it perfectly. And, every, and word, thought, and deed. He never failed, not one time. He was the true man. He was all man and all God, the true man. And he fulfilled that law totally, the Mosaic law. And when you place your faith in him and what he's done for you on that cross, it makes you a perfect law keeper. But you have to walk in it. You have to commit to it. It's more than just simply believing. You, you commit to it. You take up the cross daily and follow him. Am I right, Pastor? Right, also can't have the resurrection. Can't right, right. It, well, yeah, I'm, all, I'm also including the resurrection. Every time you mention the cross, it, you, well, because the resurrection, all it did is just ratified what he did on the cross. The, the, the resurrection was a guarantee because had he failed to atone for one sin, there would have been no resurrection. I'm, more, I'm glad you brought that out. But, but, but because he atoned for all sin, past, present, and future, the grave is empty. You went to Israel. Back in 2008, when you visited the tomb, was it, he was gone, wasn't he? Amen. Empty tomb. Amen. Praise God. So, I want to go to Israel myself, but amen, to see the empty tomb. But I don't have to go to Israel to see the empty tomb. I believe. I believe. Amen. We believe. Praise God. And uh, when you believe, it changes you. When you believe right, it changes you. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not what I once was. Because this, this message that I'm sharing with you today, the message of the cross, I was telling pastors this morning, is the greatest message in the world. I know I, I'm zealous for it. I'm totally zealous for it. I'm zealously affected for the true gospel. Amen. And I want people, i telling him, I want others to have that excitement. I want them to have what I have, you know, because that's the only way it's going to set you free. That's the only thing that sets the sinner captive free, amen, and to live a life of perpetual victory, amen. So number two, so now that he's free from the condemnation that it imposes upon him, that it, that it also is he's free from the law as a means of justification. We could, like I said before, there's no justification in the law. You can't be, you can't be saved by law. It's by grace, Amen. So it's impossible. And number three, the believer is free from the obligation to render obedience to, its, to the statutes. We could, not, we could not obey it. No way. We couldn't even, like I said, you can't even obey the laws you make up on your own. So anyway, so he's already done that for us. And we have his victory. You know, I've noticed in Paul's writings... And that is particularly in this book of Galatians, he re, Paul repeats things over and over and over, which I do appreciate. I do like that because I'm like, I like to hear things over and over again. That's, that's how it gets down into me in my heart, you know, and I believe it. You know, we, we on Wednesday nights, we talk about the propaganda that goes all the false propaganda, you know, and during World War II and, and during the reign of the Antichrist, uh, and during the Great Tribulation, there's going to be a, a regimen of bad, bad propaganda. And the more you hear that, the more you're going to believe it. Well, this opposite is true. When you hear the Word of God and, and over and over again, which Paul does do, 
you begin to believe it, and, you, and it's in your, implanted in your heart, and you act on it. Amen. By faith. I wanted to share that with you. So it's, I am so thankful that Paul repeats himself over and over. I don't, that redundancy doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. Because when you're excited about something, redundancy is no problem. I don't find, it's not boring to me, but it's, it's exciting. So I'm constantly hearing, faith cometh by what? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So you constantly hear it. And that's how we learn. So verse 4, this is where we really begin here. Verse 4, he says here, Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Yes. Wow. I'm going to read that again. That is a very strong statement that Paul's making here. This is, this is I'm going to read this again. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. So, when he says that Christ has not become of no effect unto you, he's, he's telling us that, he's warning these Galatians and he's warning the church today, you continue down that road of legalism, you're, you're in to your own destruction. Amen. You're separated, yeah, exactly. There's no, you're going to lose your soul. Amen. You can go down that route. You know, and so it's, it's, you can't get anything else from that. Yeah, that's, only, it's, that's the only thing you can derive from that scripture is Christ has become a note effect into you. You're doomed to a, a destruction for eternity. Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Now, it's, it's obvious he's speaking of justification right here, not sanctification. You're trying, you think you can be justified by the obeying of the law. It's impossible. So you can't have both. It's either law or grace. Once you abandon grace, you have no other alternative. You'll automatically fall back into law. It's just natural. Yeah. And we've all broken it many times. Absolutely. So you continue to try to keep it, but it doesn't matter. You might have done some things right. Yeah. The fact is, you have broken the law. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. 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 You know, Pastor, you reminded me of something. I heard this. People will say, <laughs> well, this is what the world thinks. They'll think, well, I, I've done a lot of good things, but other things I don't, haven't done too well in. So they try to give themselves a brownie point system, you know. They think that, that'll outweigh my, the good things I do will outweigh the bad. I used to think like that before I was saved. Oh, we all did. Amen. And all that's rubbish. It's by faith in Christ and what he's done for us on the cross. And, and continue that. And continue that. And examine your faith daily. That's what we've been talking about on Sunday mornings. Examine it daily. Make sure your faith is in the right object. Am I, is it my faith in myself or is it in him? Amen. Is my faith in doing something? Or doing the law, or is it my faith in the grace that He's provided for me? Amen. 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 So, uh, if the believer attempts to harbor some law, if you if you attempt to harbor any bit of law, what will happen? It will completely root out the grace, because le uh, it's like leaven; it spreads, it permeates. It doesn't. This, the law never. You mix a bit, a little bit of law with the grace. It's like, uh, it's like poison. You put a little poison in a, in a bottle of water, it'll, it, your, the whole water's poisoned. Amen? So you have to uh, make sure that no, no law mixed in with grace because it will root out. It's like putting a, a rotten apple in a, bag of, in a barrel full of good apples, you know, and those, those good apples will soon be rotten. Amen? So, but rather, it, it'll, it'll corrupt the good apples. So justification... Which enter, that justification by law energizes man's ability. If he attempts to justify himself by law, it's of his own making. He attempts to ju it's, it's energized by what he can do. Amen? But righteousness by faith is energized by the Holy Spirit who resides in us. Amen. Let's turn with, the book, turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. In your Bibles, I don't believe it's on the screen up here, but Hebrews chapter 10. 
this is very important. I was reading this this morning, uh, going over my notes here, and this I read this is very imperative. In fact, we touched on this last Sunday morning uh, when Pastor's message. He touched on a little bit of this, so I want to look at verse 26, and we're going to read verse to uh, verse 31. And this is what the Paul, the writer, the writer of Hebrews says. He says here, beginning with verse 26, for if we sin willfully. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remains no more sacrifice for sin. Now, he's talking about here if we sin willfully. In other words, if you, rege- if you're, you transfer your faith from Christ back to law, which is what the Galatians are doing. And they're, they're attempting to do. This is what these Judaizers are trying to get them to do, okay? After that, you will receive the knowledge of the truth that speaks to the Bible way of salvation, which is Christ and Him crucified. And that's the only way you can, can be saved. There remains no more sacrifice for sins. If you reject the cross of Christ, there's no other sacrifice because He is the final sacrifice. Amen? But then listen to this, verse 27. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. In other words, that's hellfire. <laughs> Amen. So you reject Christ and what he's done for you, that's the ultimate result is hellfire. For he says in verse 28, He who despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Um, if you read in the, old de- in the book of Deuteronomy, I, I was reading this this morning. It was uh, Deuteronomy 17, verses 2 through 17. If they, if, if, um, what would happen would be that... Uh, had to be two or more witness, witnesses for a person to be charged guilty of a crime. And not just one, but two. And so those two or three witnesses would be the first ones to stone the person. They stoned them. You know, so uh, they'd be the first ones. It kind of reminded me when Jesus, if you were reading the Gospel of John, the, the lady was caught in the act of adultery. And uh, they were tempted to stone her. And Jesus said, "Who he, he was without sin, let him be the first to cast a stone. You know, so that's what they did. They stoned these people. And they had, it's, but it had to be with, you know, uh, with two or three witnesses. So that tells you right there the value that God places on human life. It's not just one life. No, excuse me, not one witness, but two or more. Amen. So he says here in verse 29, For how much sore punishment suppose ye that ye shall... Shall he be thought worthy who has trodden under the foot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant whereof he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the Spirit of grace? In other words, when you reject Calvary, you reject, you've uh, insulted the Holy Spirit. For we know him who has said, Vengeance belongs unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. In other words, he'll chastise his people. Amen. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Wow. So that's a sobering thought. Go ahead, Pastor. And this uh, time, back in the day in the Middle East, uh, mm-hmm. didn't like something they would walk on. Yeah, right. The way it was showing, you know, that it's trampling on it. What's, what, what the writer of Hebrews is saying is saying, you know, you're literally showing absolute scorn towards the blood of Jesus In our recent times, do you remember the time when uh, George Bush, the guy, took off his shoe and threw it at him? I remember that. Yeah. yeah. That was their way of saying, I'm, "You're under my feet. Uh-huh. You're, everything you're doing is I'm I'm scorning you." Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. You know when they I was reminded of something. Whenever there was a land transaction, you know, and uh, that you sold land, they would take off the foot. The, the sandal off the there and, and it confirmed the covenant, the transaction, you know, the foot of the, uh, the, the covenant of the unsandaled. You remember reading that? I thought it was interesting, and I thought, yeah, but praise God. Huh? Boaz. Boaz, that was who it was, Boaz, yeah. I like Boaz, amen. So, uh, so this tells you here that it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God, to once know the Lord and turn your back on him. That's a forsake him. That's a dangerous place to be. You don't want to be there. Amen. 
That's a very sobering thought. So Bert, go back to Galatians chapter 5 here. He says here, For we do through the Spirit, verse 5, For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For we through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. You know, so if you notice, Paul's been, in the past, he's been saying you, you, you. But now he's saying we, we through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. You know, so that he's warning them that, uh, but we Christians, and that you could say it like this, but we Christians do not lose, le do not choose legalism. Rather, we wait in faith through the Spirit for the full realization of God's righteousness. That's exactly right. I was gonna, he took the words right out of my mouth. That's glorification. See, we've only got the first fruits of it. Romans 8, um, oh gosh, 8, Romans 8, 23 says we, we've, we've only got the first fruits, but we'll get, get all of it, the rest of it, and our, when the rapture comes, on the resurrection, we receive our glorification. In other words, the glorification of these old mortal coils we live in. No more pain and suffering. Amen. That's why Christ imputed his righteousness to us. So when God looks at us, it's as if we never sinned. Yeah. We are righteous only because of Christ. One day we will be just like him, 1 John uh, mm -hmm. uh, 3, 2. We shall see him as he is. Yeah, Amen. We'll see him as he is. We'll be like him. Yeah. And that's what uh, Paul's talking about. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The glorification of our bodies. My friends, I'm looking forward to that. So I'm tired of ache, waking up aches and pains, you know. The older I get, the more I experience it. Yeah, you know, Amen. The thing we're tired of is all the wicked sinfulness. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. We got a bright future ahead of us. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, come, Lord Jesus, even now. Amen. Maranatha. <laughs> That's like Jody's got that thing back there. I like that. Amen. Praise God. For we wait for the hope of righteousness. You know, we got a blessed hope. Titus 2.13, waiting for the blessed hope, you know. And, uh, and also Colossians 1.15 tells us, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Amen. We've got a bright future. So this, the things of this world pale in comparison to what, what we're going to have in the future. Amen. And the more things are getting more, the, war, the more the world gets more and more degrading, the more and more I look forward to what's our bright future. Amen. So uh, we don't have this righteousness totally right now. We, what we have is enough. We've got quite a bit. But the full, uh, the whole rest of it's going to come at the resurrection, amen, or the righteous, or the rapture. Uh, and that was it, Romans 8, 23, I, found, I had it in my notes here. Ourselves also, we have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves. Sometimes my body groans. <laughs> Waiting for the adoption to it, the redemption of our body, the glorification of these physical, these physical bodies. By faith, he tells us, by faith, amen. That's, that's, that's the only way we can any, get anything from God is by faith. Am I right? I don't care what it is. You got saved by faith, and amen. You know, you, you couldn't earn it. You're healed by faith, you know. I've, I've, I've experienced healing by faith, not all the time, but I, time to time I've, I've laid hands on my wife for healing, and she's gotten healed, but not, not every single time, you know. But that God does heal, Amen. Verse 6, for, I, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. Wow. So what, does it make, what difference does it make whether you're circumcised or not? That, that's, that's a non-issue. It doesn't even, it shouldn't even pertain to us. Amen? It has no spiritual bearing whatsoever. And so... What are you going to say? Go ahead. Okay. Go, go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm. I think what, one of the things you have to understand, that last phrase, but faith that, that works by love. In the New King James, it's, but faith works through love. Yeah. And remember, if you are justified by faith, because God knows you're saved. Right, right. The indwelling the power of the Holy Spirit is going to transform you. Uh -huh. Put in you the, the, the seeds of the fruit of, of love. You're going you're gonna to grow in love. Yeah. And you're going to love, you're, and that love is not a feeling. It is a, it's more of a, a giving of yourself. Yeah. And you're going to continue to have that love. And yeah. that love is really going, is Paul, uh, John talks about it a lot, it proves you are a Christian. 
because you no longer do you love the things of the world, you love the things of God. Mm -hmm. You love your brothers and sisters in Christ. You're committed to them. Yeah. yeah. See, and that's what faith, which works by love. So what you're saying, Pastor, is not so much a feeling, but it's a commitment. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What does it mean to believe? Yeah. Commit. Commit. Faithful. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Or you could say this if you want to. Well done, thy good and committed servant. It's the same thing. You know, committed. Amen. Praise God. And so Christ... He was in his circumcision. He undertook to obey the law, to perfectly obey the law. And in his baptism, he he was baptized what to fulfill all righteousness. And so, even though he didn't do it, do this to merit any to merit anything, because he didn't need it. He did it to set an example for us. Amen, amen. And what a perfect example he was, morally perfect. So he, he, he obeyed the ceremonial law, the Mosaic law. He did it all. That's why I was, I was talking to a lady the other day, Wednesday night. Uh, should we obey the Sabbath? No, 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 no. You don't obey the Sabbath. We don't obey the feast. You don't observe the feast days or any uh, ceremonial part of the law. He's already fulfilled that. He did it all. He is the, he is the Sabbath. He is those feast days. You know, he is it. He is it. I said that wrong. Okay. He is. You'll say something, Tony? Yeah, isn't that in uh, Yeah. Um, yeah. Not worrying about go, go ahead and give him the mic. So he... Yeah. Uh, isn't that in uh, First Colossians? Am I saying Colossians right? Hold on. I think it's... Uh, what is that? Uh, Romans 14. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, that's it. One man seems one day above another, and other seems every day alike. Let, man, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So, uh, you know, whether he says here, he regards the day, regards it as unto the Lord. And he regards not the day to the Lord, does he not regard it? For he who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks, gives God thanks. And he who eats not to the Lord, he eats not, and gives, and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and none dies to himself. For whether we live or whether we, excuse me, whether we live or, or live unto the Lord, we, or whether we die, we die unto the Lord. So whether we live or, or die, we are the Lord's. So it doesn't matter. You, it's to your own. If it, it shouldn't be in a, a. I think the danger there, Ken, is I, I know who you're talking about. She watched this video. This video. You got to be careful with these videos on YouTube. There's a lot right. of false ones on there, and they that one that um, was being produced was from Seventh Day Adventism, which is a cult. Right. And uh, Seventh Day Adventism will tell you if you don't worship on Saturday, you're not a Christian. What a lie. That is a pathetic mm -hmm. lie. Yeah. And, of course, you know, they don't care about the other nine, nine laws. They no. But, you know, they want to keep that. Mm -hmm. So if you have church, you got to have it on Saturday, and that's not what the early church did anyway. Yeah. They never met on Saturday. If they did, it was, you know. Well. You know, but most time they met on Sunday. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what day you meet on. Yeah. What day is it? Sabbath is not a day of meeting. It's a day of rest. Yeah. They, and uh, if you read in the Old Testament, I read where they stayed in their tents. They didn't go out there. They didn't go out to chop wood. They didn't do anything. They did. They stayed in their tents and rested. They didn't do any work whatsoever. Amen. So it was a day of rest. It's not. It's not even a day of worship. You know? Really, when you think about this, when you're resting and doing what He tells you to do, you're worshiping Him. Once a week. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, off uh, daily, daily. Um, uh, Brett wants to. Bert, oh, sorry, forgive me, forgive me. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty nine. So we were talking about rest. Uh, yeah, Matthew eleven. Yeah, I love. Yeah, yeah okay. My yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your soul. Uh huh. Right. That's right, brother. That's taking up the cross. Amen. That's that's, and you do it by faith. Amen. 
He says, come unto me, all you who labor and labor heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Well, in other words, learn of what, what he did for you on the cross. That's what we're learning today, aren't we? That's what we're teaching today, this morning. Okay, so Kevin, if, once again, you, you join these groups, and this is why they're cults. Mm -hmm. They say, oh yeah, we believe in Jesus, but you have to do A, B, C, D, and E in order to be saved. Yeah. Yes. You get Mormons are cult. Yeah. They have to do so many works, show witness. Law. Seventh-day Adventists. Yeah. Catholics. Law. Yeah. yeah. They base their faith on keeping those command, those laws, you know. They make that you. It's, I don't care. It doesn't have to be the net necessary. The Mosaic law it could be laws of the Catholics or, or the, the Jehovah's uh, Witnesses, or any or uh, you know Mormons or laws of your own making. It's it's you know there's no justification in that whatsoever. It's faith in Christ and what He's done for you on the cross. Because He, like I said before, He's totally fulfilled it all. Amen. We're not, so what, he, what Paul is saying here, man is not circumcised, he, he's not, excuse me, man is not saved because he is circumcised, or, nor is he condemned because he's not. The design of Christianity was to abolish these rites and ceremonies and to introduce a way of salvation that shall be ap applicable to all mankind. Because the reason why he did that was because not everybody can do it. Not everybody can do, uh, uh, to fulfill the law. Nobody could. So none of us. And so Jesus had to do it all. Amen. The Jewish rite had no value for bringing a man to Christ or keeping a man in Christ. No way whatsoever. There's no real spiritual power in observing of such ceremonies or in their abstinence. There's no power in that whatsoever. It's just doing a religion. That's all it is. But faith, which works, yeah, my, my, my translation is works by love. You said yours, what, faith which works through love. Yeah, my, King James says by love. But, you know, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 1, Paul says, that Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I'm a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. Amen. If our faith does not produce the love of God within us, then we're a ting uh, tingling brass or clanging symbol and tinging, cling, tingling symbol. <laughs> Tongue tie. Amen. That's a noise. Yeah, that's it. You're just about, you're loud. You're just a noise. Somebody raise their hand. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Denise. I'm terrible about names. You got to help me. It took me a little bit to find it, but I think what Tony was referring to was um, Colossians 2. That's it. That was it. Where it says, so let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath. That's it. You're right. You're right. Thank you so much. Let's, let's look at that. Let's look at that. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I knew there was something. Colossians 2. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, beginning with verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of new moon or on the Sabbath days. Right there. There it is. For which, look at this, verse 17. For they which are a shadow of the things to come. And, but the body is of Christ. Why worship a shadow when you got the body? I don't want to worship no shadow. I want the substance. I want the real deal. <laughs> That's what I want. I want the real deal. I want something I can believe in. Amen. Yeah. You know, what the people who do this, they're, they're full of pride. Talking about you. Look what I've done. Yeah. Oh, yeah, brother. You're right. Listen to this. Read, follow with me, verse 18. But let no man to beguile you of your reward. In other words, concerning foul, he throws false doctrine in your face. Amen. And a voluntary, humil and a voluntary humility or in worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up in his fleshly mind. There it is. That's what religion does. It fleshly mind builds you, builds you up. Amen. It, 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 that self-righteousness is a killer. It kills. Self-righteousness hung Christ on the cross. Did you know that? Self-righteous Pharisees hung Christ on the cross. Uh, Tony has something to say. Somebody give him the mic. Uh, somebody, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think it 
you continue on like from 20 to 23 and 23, I don't know if yeah. uh, Luke King James says it's a self-imposed religion. Yeah. yeah, you're right, brother. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. Self-imposed religion. That's all they were, that's all they were trying to do. Amen. And so the self-righteous hung Christ on the cross. So that's what that's what law keeping produces. Self-righteousness. I did it, but you can't. Just look at the look at the parable of uh, Luke chapter 18 verses 9 through 14. The parable of the uh, the Pharisee and the publican. Amen. That, that that's a I always, every time I think of that, I think of that parable that Jesus gave us. Yeah, all right, okay. Okay, we've looked at it a number of times, but it don't hurt to look at it again. Yeah, but it's Luke 18. Okay, Luke 18, beginning with verse 9. The parable, the parable of the Pharisee and the publican. And he spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves, speaking of self-righteousness. And they were the righteous and despised others. Amen. So they looked down on their noses on other people. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. In other words, he just prayed about it. He just, his prayers ain't getting no higher in his nose. Amen. So he's just paying lip service. And he says, God, I can, I can just picture this. God. I thank you that I'm not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or have any of this publican over here standing by my side. I fast twice a week, and I give all tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off, who would not even lift so much as lift his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. And I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself shall be abased, and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. Wow. I can't, I've read that parable so many times. I, I tell you, I, 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 it just, it, it, speaks to, it speaks to every one of us before we were saved. And I take, guarantee it, it does, in a way, it speaks to even the, the modern believer. Uh, who accepts Christ as their sa Lord and Savior. We have to fight that, don't we? Amen. When I was confirmed into the church, at, uh, I think it was in the eighth grade, and some things I had to get up and stand up and quote in front of the congregation, such as the Apostles' Creed, and how proud I was. <laughs> and not even realizing yeah. that yeah. I one second to myself. It didn't, brother. It didn't. Uh-uh. Oh, boy. Uh that's vanity. That's vanity, really, you know. And it, stinks in the nostril. it stinks in the nostrils of God. You know, this, this, I, I just like to consider this Pharisee a blowhard, you know. I just, a blowhard, just puffing, huffing, puff stuff, you know. It didn't mean anything to God whatsoever. But, but God, this man, this other man, this publican, beat his breast. He wouldn't even, look up, lift, even lift up his eyes towards heaven. But he says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said he went home justified rather than the other. All he did was a simple prayer from his heart, and God received it. And one of the things you have to see in that, and, and, and we're going to be teaching in the series, is that he was mourning over his sin. Yeah. He realized he was I'm a sinner. depraved. Depraved sinner. He yeah. was literally grieved by his sin. Yeah. That he knew that he violated God's laws. Yeah. And that he deserved to be punished forever. But that's why I said be merciful. Ain't be merciful. He to be punished. Amen. You know, Pastor, I was just thinking, uh, that's what it takes for anybody to come to Christ, be merciful. It's not just saying a prayer or reciting a prayer. It has to be coming from the heart. God, be merciful to me because I, I deserve death. I deserve spiritually death. I deserve, I deserve to be spiritually separated from God for eternity. Every one of us did because we all failed. Amen. But by his grace, he saved us. And we have, and, and let's look at, okay, let's look at Ephesians 2. This came to my mind, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And let's go back and look at this here. This hits home with me. Ephesians 2, he says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We have no reason for boasting whatsoever. Amen. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works 
which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. See, our good works, that tells me right there, our good works should follow our faith in Christ. We don't, yeah, we're sanctified. So, in other words, these works, the works don't lead you to faith. It's, excuse me, works do not lead you to faith, in other words. Amen. Your proper faith will produce the works. Amen. I want to make sure I got that right. So, it's by the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's no room for boasting. The only thing we boast about, uh, and the only thing that Paul writes in Galatians 6, 14, God forbid that I should glory, saving the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. That was his reason for boasting. And that should be the reason for, bo- for the boasting of any believer, that we boast in what he's done for us, what Jesus has done. Amen? Praise God. Back to Galatians here, verse 7. He says here, You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Hmm. I bet I know the answer to that one. Who did hinder you? You did run well. So they start off well. It's, it's, a lot of times it's good. You know, we start off well, but it's, what's the most important is how we end. Amen. And so his, under, they did run well under Paul's ministry. They begun well and were a, making excellent progress in their spiritual growth. But somebody or something, someone came in and cut in a, a, in front of them. Amen. And something got, somebody had hindered them. It's like the, that Greek word, there's a Greek word called, and I'm not pronounced, I hope I pronounce it right. It says enkopto, E-N-K-O-P-T-O. I'm going to spell it again. E N k-o-p-t-o and it means to uh it's a military term to setting up an obstacle or breaking up a road in other words this the judaizers were committing illegal interference they were cutting in on the teaching of what paul had already established in other words like a runner you're running a race and somebody just cuts in front of you and uh trips you up amen praise god and he goes in ahead. And so that, and it's the other fellow's at a disadvantage. Amen. Thank you. So these Galatians had once been so full of joy and love in their faith, and the Judaizers had cut in ahead of Paul and had marred their once happy state. They were happy. They were joyful in what they, this newfound salvation. Because that, that these Galatians were involved in paganism. You know, they, they didn't know anything about the Mosaic Law. But they're involved heavily in paganism. And so they've been set free from that. And they were rejoicing in the, in the, in the salvation that Paul had provided, had, ta- had taught them. And so therefore, you had these Judaizers coming in there to throw, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, a bucket of cold water. And just t- to put out the fire that was in their hearts. Amen. And so the. Yeah. And this is what false teachers do. They oh, yeah. Hinder. Yeah. They always send it, regardless if it's the Judaizers in the, in the Galatian church or yeah. if it's the false teachers we see today in the church. Yeah. So they, they always bring something that sounds good or may look like it's good, but it always hinders us from obeying and eventually leads us away from Christ right back into destruction. Yeah. Christ saved us out of it. Yeah. They always attempt to mar the truth. They always see that's what we're talking about. Division always happens within the church. It's not outside the church. It comes within. That's where the most the most uh, the uh, um, hostility comes from within, not outside. Although it's getting that way now, the hostility coming from outside. But right now, it's dealing with inside. What I'm talking about is what's happening inside the church. Division brings division, and, that, and Satan likes nothing better than that. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. It's quarter till, and we're going to pray, and we'll pick this up next week. Amen? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this study, Lord God, and I just thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and we, I pray that something was said that will impart truth to these to the people here and that they'll act on it, Lord, and I pray for those that are watching us online that, 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 that they'll continue to open, their, to open their ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us in this hour. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen.